Well, good afternoon and welcome to another Vegetology live stream. Yes, we are. We are getting into a whole bunch of good stuff this afternoon. Supplements for all of you who, like me, are over 40. That's right. We're going to get into all of that. Uh, what are the best supplements to use? How should I take them? All of those kind of questions, we're going to get into it because you know what? That's what we're here to do. Now, uh, to do this, let me bring in my esteemed colleagues here. I'm going to click a button. We've got Chris and we've got Jen who are joining us on today's live stream. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Good. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Good. It's great to be here again in your sunny company, that's for sure. So uh, we're going to get into all good stuff about supplements. Now, I remember... Uh, and I'm not going to ask you your respective ages. I'll just be quite straightforward. I was I remember turning 40. Uh, I remember that um, the big 4-0 bash that we had uh, in Liverpool in a place called Leaf. Great party. Actually, great party. Really enjoyed it. Uh, but it seems to be the sort of common school of thought, which says I'm 39. I'm OK. Now I've hit 40. Wham. My life is going to be changed in an instant, right? Uh, and, and nothing's going to work exactly the same again. Uh, and apparently it all goes downhill from here. So, you know, I'm full of positive energy when I turn 40, uh, just because of what every, everybody's telling me. Um, so supplements are one of those questions, you know, that we get asked a lot about here at Vegetology. I'm over 40, what should I take? Uh, because we've got that I'm over 40 mindset, things are going downhill quick. I need to do something to help myself uh, in my old age. <laughs> what does that need to be? So that's what we're going to get into today. Uh, how many of you uh, watching the live stream, by the way, are actually like me in the over 40 camp? You can just you don't have to signal. Just nod your head. I don't need to know. But yeah, that's me. <laughs> Chris is raising his hand. Yeah, Jen's raising his. We're all over 40. Let's be real. Anyway, so I'm really interested in this conversation. If you are watching the live stream, a big warm welcome to you. You can join in the comments, say hi. Let us know where you're watching. And if you have any questions that come up during this live stream, we would love to answer them. We're going to be here for probably about 20 to 30 minutes talking about supplements for people in their 40s and over. And we've also actually we've got a few questions which don't relate to anything of supplements in your 40s that have been sent in so we're going to get to those as well we're going to get to all of your questions with the fabulous jen and chris yes we are so uh, are you ready guys are you ready for this yep let's do it have you, have you got your zimmer frames ready your walking sticks yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're all good to go so jen as i mentioned i'm over 40 uh What's, what supplements do I need to start taking? Let's start there. What do I need to start thinking about? Um, well, should we start with do you need to take supplements now you're 40? Yeah, because yeah. I think that's probably something people are asking. And, well, things do start to deteriorate once you hit 40, unfortunately. <laughs> Is this your genuine um, experience? Is this your experience? Pardon? Is this your genuine experience that things start well, to Well, being, being fairly newly 40. <laughs> 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 I was a lot A new member 40. of the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a newbie. Um, so as, post 40, um, your muscle mass starts to deteriorate. Your metabolic, metabolic rate slows a bit. So you might find you're putting on a bit of weight more easily. It's probably a bit harder to lose weight. Um, oh, amen to all of those. Yes, that's yeah. right there. If you're female, menopause will be on the horizon for you, which presents changes. Um, and also you are at risk of, you know, chronic diseases developing them more easily, things like diabetes, all kinds of different things. So actually, now is the time to possibly tweak your diet and think about what you are putting into your body to help it get through the aging process well so that you can live an active and full life even when you are post 40. <laughs> <laughs> so supplements it can be are, done. Yeah it can be done and supplements are a great way to help supplement your diet so that mm -hmm. your body gets what it needs. Very good. Very good. Have you have you found this deterioration Chris since hitting 40? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I mean it tiredness it's maybe it's more having kids than anything but tiredness just seems <laughs> harder and harder to, to shift and i think jen alluded to maybe losing that little bit of um weight sometimes if, you, if you've had a heavy weekend 
it lingers a bit longer than it used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've all had. Uh, I find it a lot harder actually to to lose weight in my forties than I ever did in my thirties. But that's another story. We were, maybe another live stream on that. Um, so, Jen, right? You talked about um, you talked about you know all these things that happen when you go forty. Your muscle mass starts to deteriorate. Your metabolic rate goes down menopause you know and all that sort of stuff uh, and you your body needs obviously to change and adapt and and so on and so forth can i just get the nutrients i need if i improve my diet so if i just change my diet can i can i get all the nutrients that i need that help me in all of these problems yeah well in an ideal world yes but if we're totally honest with ourselves we don't make the best choices for our bodies um, do we, you know, so it would be great if we could get all the nutrients we need. Um, but in reality, we don't. Um, if you are following a vegan vegetarian lifestyle, you do need to take, you know, D3, B12, um, omega-3. And conversely, even if you're a meat eater, that doesn't mean you're going to be getting all the all the nutrients you need from your diet mm. either. So actually, It'd be great if we could, but in reality, we don't all get what we need for our, from our diets. So supplements are great for doing just that, supplementing a good diet. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it isn't a case of I take supplements so I can eat what I want. And are you sure? Diet. Because I, I'm still waiting for that <laughs> pill. I just... <laughs> doesn't exist, sadly. <laughs> Maybe Chris, Chris can, we, can we get one. on to that? <laughs> that could be our next project. Yeah. Um, so I think it's the it's the best of both, isn't it? And we're all at risk of deficiencies. I don't think I don't know if you'd agree, Chris, but I don't think food is quite as the nutritional value of food isn't quite as good as it was years ago anyway. And um, they do. They are saying that it's depleting. Um, so I think supplements and a good diet are a really good balance. Yeah, I totally agree. And when you look at the statistics on deficiency, Deficiency in certain vitamins and minerals it is as rife in a meat eating or omnivorous diet as it is in vegans and vegetarians. So even though it is the easy answer, yeah, of course, just eat a balanced diet. The reality is we don't. Just because you can eat a balanced diet because of what you choose to eat, it doesn't mean you do. We still survive on pot noodles and biscuits and whatever else. <laughs> you know, but we've had a busy day, don't we? So, Well, yeah, I've not had a pot noodle since I was a student, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. But I, I feel like, does have you found your diet's changed since you, you know, now you're in your 40s? Is your diet different? Are you more aware of what you eat? I, I am, I think. Um, and this is going to sound really, I'm like, I'm really old, but I can't eat really late at night. <laughs> because i'm digesting a meal for yeah. longer and so yeah. you know yeah i can't eat like i did when i was younger definitely the worst thing ever eating late I've, we, I've got some friends who um, are very lucky to live on the canary islands and he, he lives a very busy life and he, he always tells me they always eat like the spanish at kind of 10 o'clock but oh. he doesn't eat like the spanish his choice of meals more uh the english fare as it were <laughs> so he struggles to um digest this and uh yeah reaps the <laughs> Not the benefits, as it were. I always say you've got to eat earlier. Let the body kind of digest it. Yeah, yeah. That's a really interesting point, actually, and nothing completely related to supplements. But actually, the, the I found since being 40, if I eat past 8 o'clock at night, I'm not in a good place. And in fact, I I have to I, I'm slowly bringing it further and further back, like, you know, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, whatever. But yeah, 8 o'clock is my cutoff point. Just nothing really after 8 o'clock, especially anything heavy or, you know, it's just not going to work. It's just not going to work well, is it really? So, Chris, <laughs> you know, 10 pints of lager, then you must eat at whatever time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might actually have a whole different set of problems if you drink 10 pints of lager. <laughs> and I don't think supplements are necessarily going to help with that. <laughs> um, but, Chris, uh, you know, what supplements do we recommend uh, for those who are over 40? Let's get into that, right? So we know we need supplements. I'm over 40. What, what sort of things should I be looking at? Okay, yeah, so Jen mentioned some of these very briefly earlier, and one of the main ones I will always recommend is vitamin D3. So, I mean, this is essential for your immune system, for healthy bones and joints, a healthy heart, healthy eyes. Um, as we do get older, our immune system, it does come under different challenges. 
And so vitamin D level is massively important. The same with omega-3, often overlooked because it's not a vitamin, but omega-3, really good for brain development, cognitive function, heart health, reducing inflammation, macular, or well, fighting macular degeneration. And again, as I say, it's often overlooked. Yeah. But in general, it's a really good time to get a blood test to understand your vitamin and mineral status when you turn 40 um, okay. or, or thereabouts, because it's likely you've got one or two very small deficiencies that can have a very big effect. And it will be things that you can't predict. So you might be slightly deficient in copper or in calcium, magnesium. And by getting a test done, you can make very small changes to your diet through supplementation that can have a huge difference. So if you haven't got the time to do that, which lots, lots of us think, yeah, I'll get a blood test next year. <laughs> On top of the vitamin D and um, omega-3, I just recommend taking a really good multi-mineral and uh, vitamin supplement. So our VegFit, for instance, contains as many mi minerals and vitamins as we can con con completely cram in there. Mm. It's just a really good kind of catch-all to make sure you're topping up with what you need. Yeah, no, that's great. So I, I find it interesting, actually, when I said to you, you know, what supplements do I need when I'm over 40? Your first one, your first response is vitamin D. Uh, is there a reason you went straight down? Well, I recommend this for everybody, quite frankly, but it's just, it's such a workhorse of a vitamin and we're still learning about all the things it does all of the time. So we know it for immune, immunity. And as I say, when you do get older, your immune system is coming under more and more kind of strain just from daily rigors or the, the rigors of everyday life. Yeah. Um, but it's got links to uh, the mood and depression too. So again, mm -hmm. we've, we've got more going on in our lives in your forties. You're, you may have kids, you may have a more stressful job, you may have both. Uh, so yeah, vitamin D, I think it just comes into its own even more so at, at this kind of age group. That's really fascinating. And the, 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 one of the things that we've got here at Vegetology is two strengths of vitamin D, right? Um, we've got the thousand and we've got the two and a half thousand. Um, how do I know which one is right if I'm thinking vitamin D? You know, wh which one should I, I head for? So this is really difficult as a, an overall topic because the, the daily recommended amount, the so-called nutrient reference value, NRV, which is set by the authorities, is 200 IU, which is really low, actually. That We would consider that a maintenance dose. Mm. Realistically, I think adults of this kind of age should be looking at between 500 and 1,000 per day as a kind of ongoing dose. We also offer the 2,500 for those of us who are susceptible to deficiency, so particularly vegans and vegetarians who just will not get any from the diet mm. and individuals who don't get much sunlight, which lots of us don't because we're locked away in offices <laughs> all of the time. And we're in England, let's be yeah, real. Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> We've had our week of summer. It's just gone. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, so we've got, obviously, the vitamin D. We've got the Opti3, the Omega3 um, type uh, products. And you talked about a multivitamin, a good multivitamin. So you talked about VegFit. What's the difference then between uh, VegFit, Active Energy, and Joint V? So there are three multivitamins that we have. Which ones of those should, should I be looking at? Like, for example, you said earlier on about turning 40, tiredness seems to be harder to shift. Um, should you be taking something like Active Energy over VegFit? So my initial advice is start with VegFit because okay. it's such a brilliant supplement and it and it does address energy and it does address joints in, in terms of the amounts and the, the types of nutrients we put in there. But we would consider Active Energy and Joint V to be specialists for those areas. So these are more for individuals that do VegFit or other things just don't seem to be working for or it's such a kind of chronic problem. So mm. active energy is brilliant if you've just always kind of suffered with your body clock. So maybe you just can't sleep at the right times, you can't get the energy at the right time. It's perfect. It, it really helps to kind of almost reset that body clock, get you going in the day, get you relaxing at night. Mm. And it's similar way for joint V. If you've got a little bit more pain in your joints or maybe a little bit kind of muscular inflammation than, um, than you used to get, Joint V is a really good one to try. And again, something you can do if you've been a good fan of VegFit is alternate. So maybe take VegFit on a Monday, Joint V on a Tuesday, VegFit Wednesday, repeat. Yeah, uh, It's just a good way of trying different things. But mm -hmm. yeah, Joint V, uh, sorry, VegFit is great in general. Joint V and Active Energy are kind of specialists if, if it's a kind of problem area for you. 
That's very good. Very, very helpful. So uh, go to Trio. For those of you who you, who are in their 40s, uh, basically us three, uh, go to Trio is uh, vitamin D, uh, omega-3 and a good multifit member. Start with VegFit uh, and see how you get on. And we think that's going to make a big difference for you. Now, uh, who wants to answer this one? Chris, I'm going to go back to you um, just because I think it is a great question for you to answer. Uh, <laughs> what does this change if I'm... Uh, not me i'm not male i'm female uh, approaching menopause so does does your list change for that mostly the same so i think um maybe in slightly different ways so vitamin d again really really important really good for balancing uh the immune system you've got a lot of hormonal changes going on so vitamin d is very good at stabilizing bodily processes if you like Omega-3, really important here. So omega-3 will help with fighting inflammation. It will also help with skin problems. So again, hormonal changes will affect the skin. You are more susceptible to acne, adult acne, breakouts, hot flashes, and omega-3 is really useful there. But the thing I mentioned earlier about getting a, a test, a blood test to understand your micronutrient status is really, really important during menopause, even the latter stages of perimenopause, because again, Mineral imbalance is really, really common during menopause. So having a blood test will tell you whether you've, your iron level is absolutely plummeted or even your chromium level might be low, something that we, we might not think about every day, zinc. So again, that will help you to identify what a kind of multivitamin to go for. But in general, again, a really good multivitamin and mineral will help just keep everything pretty level. And that's yeah. where I would say joint V, uh, sorry, that veg V comes in very well. Other things to look out for with menopause are certain botanical extracts that contain phytoestrogen. And phytoestrogen helps to, again, rebalance any hormonal changes that the body's going through at that time. And it can have some quite dramatic effects, particularly on the skin and with um, hot flashes. And I'm pleased to say we're in the final stages of testing. Oh, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. We, we need to do the drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> now you can do it. Go. <laughs> I'm pleased to say we're in the final stage of testing our new um, menopause supplement. So this has been in the making during pretty much all of lockdown for us. Um, and it, it's a combination of very specific minerals, vitamins, and some really good power horse uh, botanical extracts to offer that kind of phytoestrogen, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory effect that uh, is so important. So more news to come soon, but hopefully we'll be launched depending on our marketing colleagues, but within <laughs> three, four months? Uh, maybe. I think we're, it's more towards the end of the year. But yeah, we're definitely, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're definitely looking forward to this because actually, let's, I mean, let's, you know, drop a few, a few sort of, uh, you know, the mic drop moments. So we've got the menopause supplement uh, coming up. We've also got one coming out on sleep, right? For those, I mean, you mentioned earlier on about active energy helping with sleep. Um, we've got one coming out with that as well, haven't we? So we have got some great products coming out, mm. uh, hopefully by the end of the year. So do stay connected with what's going on because um, these things have been developed and they get in trials and all kinds of stuff. So super, super excited about these new products um, coming out. We think you're going to love them. Uh, and with, as with all things vegetology, we don't rush into something and just do it because it's a fad. We, we, we want to make sure the science is there, right? Definitely. And with a sleep product, if, if you are a customer of ours and you are suffering chronic sleep problems, do drop us a line on Facebook Messenger or email and we will send you some to try because we're, we're doing a lot of studies at the moment, get some fantastic results, but um, yeah, always yeah. get to try with more people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, do that. So if you struggle with sleep or in fact, if you are struggling with menopause, do get in touch with us and we will send you some products to try. We'd love to get your feedback on them before we release them to the general public. They will be totally safe for you to try before we release them to the general public. It is worth saying. Um, <laughs> totally uh, safe. Pass it. <laughs> <laughs> Please have a disclaimer. Yeah, a little bit of disclaimer. You'll have to sign a contract that's like 80 pages thick to get them. But that's okay. We can send them to you ahead of time. No, we genuinely would love to hear from you uh, if you would like to know more about that um, and be part of the trials. That would be amazing. So one of the common things, Chris, you talked about there was um, OPT3, right? So uh, we have... Uh, this omega-3, uh, oftentimes in, in the office, Opti-3 or 
the Omega-3 capsules that we have are referred to as our hero product. It's the one product that everybody seems to love. It's the one product that everybody seems to buy, um, and you know, which is fantastic. And in fact, this week, uh, the um, Opti-3 liquid is back in stock. We've got the unflavored version on its way. So there's all kinds of things going on here. And you can take the Opti-3 and the Omega-3 as both a liquid and a tablet, right? Yeah. I'm right in saying that, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, we get a lot of question, a lot of questions, a lot of questions uh, from people about the best way to take Opti Three. Um, so, for those of you who haven't taken Opti Three, especially the liquid before, um, which is an oil-based supplement, Jen, can we mix Opti Three liquid with food? This is probably one of the key questions people ask us. Yeah, so we've had loads of our Vegetology customers telling us that they do mix it with their food. So the Vegetology team, we've had lots of fun, haven't we, over the past few weeks using Opti3 liquid um, in salad dressings. Yeah. So that's one way you can take it because it is an oil. It is an oil based supplement. So all we've done is switch out five mils per person of the oil we use in our dressings with the Opti3 liquid. And that is a really fun way of taking it. Um, not everybody likes the taste and the texture of Opti3 liquid. So this is a really great way of, mm. of consuming it each day. So I don't know if people have seen, we've been posting our recipes on our Facebook page, on our Instagram channel, so you can go and check them out. And um, so we've had lots of fun creating summer salads using Opti3 in the dressing. And we want all of our Vegetology customers to have a go as well, don't we? So we've decided that we are going to launch a bit of a, a giveaway over the rest of the summer. So it's over to our customers to post a photo of their favourite summer salad with you using Opti3 in the dressing. And they need to put the recipe in and they need to tag us at Vegetology. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the summer, we are going to try some. We're going to pick our favourite. And that winner will get, I think we need a drum roll. That winner will get a £20 Vegetology code to use on our website. So awesome. if you're an Opti3 taker, the, the liquid form, it's time to get creating some summer salads and sharing them with us. But don't forget to tag us. So yeah, we know that's, you've done that's the important part. <laughs> we need to know you're doing it. Uh, so do tag us. And you're right. We've had some fun because uh, we like with all things, we experiment on ourselves first. And so in the office, we we basically got all kinds of different salads uh, and all kinds of ingredients one day. And we spent literally the whole day making different types of salad dressings, some of which. Uh, we'll never see the light of day again, uh, and some of which will be shared on the uh, on the on the social media. So make yeah. sure you follow us at Instagram at Vegetology, and we'll post all of those on there as well as on our Facebook page. But yes, we would love to hear from you. We would love to see your recipes. We would love to know the ingredients that you have chosen, uh, and tell us what you think because we will try them here as well. We were we were actually pleasantly surprised by some of these things, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, I think my favourite, and it wasn't a summer salad, my favourite was balsamic vinegar with a bit of Opti3 and a crusty loaf because the orange flavour really comes out with the balsamic vinegar and that was mm. really tasty. It was actually quite nice, wasn't it? So mm -hmm. get the flavoured version of the Opti3 liquid, put in a mm -hmm. bit of balsamic, eat it with some very delicious bread and you are off to the races, as they say. Yeah, it was lush. It was yeah. really, really nice. So, yeah. Totally enjoyed that. Now, um, one of the questions that we get asked, uh, we get asked, it sounds like we've been asked this on multiple occasions. We haven't, but we were asked this question following our live stream last time. Um, can I add Opti3 to my chai tea? What do you reckon, Chris? To your chai tea? Well, from a, from a chemistry perspective, it's fine. Um, a short amount of exposure to, I guess, chai tea temperature won't damage it to damage the nutrient in there, but it will be a bit of a mess because, <laughs> as you've said, Opti3 is an oil. I think putting any oil into a tea, which is water, you're going to end up with a bit of an oil slick on the, on the surface <laughs> of your tea. <laughs> so, um, quite honestly, I, I suspect there are probably better ways of, of taking it, if I'm totally honest. Yeah, a bit of balsamic vinegar and a bit of bread, maybe. Yeah. Uh, try, but you know what? Try it. Take some photos and let us know how you get on because that would be a really uh, interesting thing to see. So, uh, 
we would love to know how you take your Opti3 liquid. Do do let us know um, if it is safe to do so. How you take your Opti3? We'd love to hear from you. Now, uh, Chris, I mentioned, or you mentioned earlier on, um, your go-to vitamin, vitamin D, is just one of those things you think everyone should be at. And it just got me thinking. Um, you know what? The weather recently in the UK. I mentioned it has been hot. We've had our summer week uh, here. Worked almost two weeks, I think, in the UK. We we did very well this year. Um, so we don't usually get that much sun um, living in the UK, but those uh, outside of the UK, uh, you know, warmer days, um, should they be taking the vitamin D supplements? You know, do they? Do we still need to take them? Jen, what do you think on this? Okay, so there's a few ways that you can get vitamin D3. You can get it from food, you can get it from supplements, and you can get it from the sun. It's called the sunshine vitamin. So what happens is um, when your skin's exposed to sun, the, U uh, the UVB rays in the sun interact with a protein in your skin and they basically manufacture the active form vitamin D3. And so your body can then use that. So it sounds really easy, doesn't it? Go outside, expose your skin to the sun and you can make vitamin D3. If you live in the UK, obviously we had a sunny week last week and today it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> And it's forecast for the rest of the week. I think within the UK, like you said, it's not it's not reliable to use the sun as your source of vitamin D3. And there's other factors to consider. I think Chris has touched on it. Lifestyle, if you work indoors, you're not going to be exposed to the sun. You need to be exposed to it when it's at its highest. And um, that's one factor. Obviously, it can't just be kind of just, you know, first thing in the morning. The sun is strongest when it's high in the sky midday. Um. The amount of skin that you're exposing matters. If you've only got the palms of your hands and your face, that's not much skin is going to be exposed for, you know, your, your skin to manufacture the vitamin D3. So that's another factor. Um, depending on your skin colour, paler skin makes it quicker than darker skin. Um, if you're wearing an SPF, which we're recommended to do to protect our skin against the UVA rays, so sun creams, filter out UVB and UVA to protect your skin against skin cancer. So you're going to interfere with the manufacturing process in your skin of vitamin D3. So do you see where I'm going? It's not yeah. that reliable. So actually a supplement is a great way of making sure, particularly in the autumn and winter and all year round, if you want, that your, that your body is getting the vitamin D3 it needs. And great if you're exposed to sun and you get a top up, that's brilliant. But like Chris has said, it's such a hero vitamin that I personally would rather take a supplement and know my body is getting exactly what it needs yeah. um, rather than, you know, hoping it's got enough from the sun. Um, that yeah, especially in this in country. This country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a, that, you've covered it really well there, Jen. And the one thing I would add, I've worked on sun protection products for many, many years, from my background, and safety in the sun by far outweighs um, getting your top off and, and going and walking around to get vitamin D. Because UVB, when we talk about the UVB irradiation, we can think of B for burning. It's the same sun rays that cause sunburn. And UVA for aging, that's more about um, potentially as bad as skin cancer but if you go out just trying to get um vitamin d production you're liable to cause yourself irreversible skin damage that's why we've even got um vitamin d deficiency in australia for instance is mm. as high as 30 percent across the country and even higher 60 percent locally because either people are going out and being sensible by wearing a sunscreen to block out the damage from the sun which by far outweighs the, the good um or staying indoors because mm. it's too hot so you're absolutely right there that the answer is not just go out and stand in the sunshine for an hour and, and get all the vitamin d because you may do yourself more harm than good mm. that's so supplementing is definitely a safe way of doing it very good that's our public safety announcement for the day <laughs> yeah, uh, and well, welcome I mean, to, I mean, to our customers in australia actually uh we we ship a lot of vitamin d to australia mm. absolutely for that very reason and so um you know what, the other day, I, I'm not going to do it now, but I, I did the worst Australian accent imitation and I felt really bad afterwards. I was trying to do my best Aussie accent. It came out really bad on a live stream and I ended up apologising because it was so bad. Uh, so again, my apologies to the Australian nation. Uh, it will not happen again on a live. <laughs> so 
One of the things uh, that we absolutely love here at Vegetology uh, is the fact the family keeps getting bigger and, and more and more of you keep coming along and buying uh, the products from the site, which we really appreciate. And a big, fat, warm welcome to all of our new customers uh, here at Vegetology. It's great to have you. And one of the questions one of our new customers sent in uh, about supplements, which I thought was a really good question to end this live stream on, uh, they asked, um, I have recently discovered Vegetology. Are your supplements independently tested, Chris? In a word, yes. Um, they are. So <laughs> we well, are governed thanks, by... Thanks for watching yeah. the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so we are governed by the European Food Safety Authority, or EFSA, and also local authorities, so the local councils here in the UK. And by law, we have to prove and demonstrate that our products meet the claims we make on the label. So... If we say it contains X number of vitamins, we have to prove it. And not only that, do we have to prove it by testing. Our local authorities will come and randomly inspect us, take samples, and they will test them. And we could be shut down if they don't um, mm. contain what we say. So, yes, we send our products to independent laboratories to test for the nutrients that are in there. We perform stability testing to prove shelf life. We do a lot of stress testing on the product to make sure that no matter what you do with that product, at the end of the two year, you've had it, the shelf life, those nutrients are still there. And one final thing I would say is we manufacture our own products, apart from Opti3 capsules, where we send our oil to another company to put it into the capsules. We're not just a bunch of guys with a laptop and a clever website team who've sourced a product from a far flung country, put a label on it and sent mm -hmm. it out to market. We make the products. Yeah. We test the products. We get them tested independently. So anybody looking for reassurance, I would hope we can offer all the reassurance you need. Yeah, very good. It's a very good point. Uh, to, to Can I ask, and this may sound like a really stupid question, um, and I appreciate quite often my questions are, are stupid questions. <laughs> um, so we're governed by EFSA. Is that true even though we've now gone through the pain of Brexit? Yes. So as things stand, the UK is basically piggybacking or daisy chaining European regulations when it comes to foods and supplements. And long um, may that continue. I was going to say, <laughs> is this a good thing, do you think? It is, because quite frankly, we've got nothing to hide. We, we stick by the regs, we do things properly. Uh, I'm sure there are several brands that are hoping it goes the other way, but we, we are hoping it stays and things are done properly. Yeah, very good. Very good. And on that bombshell, uh, to quote the, the very famous Jeremy Clarkson, um, uh, we will end the live stream there. So we will be back again uh, doing our next Vegetology live stream in September. So due to holidays and all that kind of good stuff, we won't be here in August, but we will be back in September. So if you have any questions you would like us to uh, tackle on the live stream, we would love to hear from you. Just get in touch with us at Vegetology, either through the website, through our customer service. All the information is actually online. So just head to our website, vegetology.com. And everything is on there in terms of how you can get in touch with us. We would love to hear your questions for the live stream. Uh, Jen, just let everybody know what, uh, what topics we're going to be tackling in September. So we are going to um, tackle all to do with uh, returning to studies, how you can best support your mind through supplements, um, your immune system, because your kids, teenagers, students will all be mixing again. Um, so we're going to have a look at supplements for studies, we might call that one. Um, We've not got and a title also, yet, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, supplements and, for studies. Yeah. And we're also going to start thinking about how we can best prepare our immune systems, our bodies for the autumn, winter. So that it's we crazy can that we're well. talking about that now, isn't it? I mean, it, you know, we've just gone through the hottest period of England's summer and I we're know. now talking about autumn and winter. But uh, bear in mind, that's not going to come until the end of September. So that's when no. we're going to stop talking about and that. It's going to so, be yeah. a big, big autumn and winter this year, I think. Keep your immune system well prepped. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Why, why, why this prediction that it's going to be a big autumn winter? I think it's just the, the free for all as um, lockdowns come to an end. Uh, We've okay. all been, I don't, I don't want to preempt the September talk, but um, our <laughs> news haven't been stretched particularly recently when you're sitting at home. But um, yeah, back in the real world, it's kind of, oh, help. <laughs> mm. Well, 
it's a, on that bombshell uh, we will end uh, this week's live stream. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your questions that you have been sending in. Hope you found this useful. As I said, any questions, let us know. We will see you again in just a few weeks' time. Uh, I think that's all from us. So uh, any departing words of wisdom from yourself, uh, Jen? Yes, don't forget to tag us in your summer salad recipes using Opti3. Very good. Uh, and any, enjoy uh, the rest of the summer. <laughs> yeah, well, you can. Uh, and Chris, anything from you? But No, just, yeah, the same. Enjoy the rest of your summer or winter, wherever you are, and um, <laughs> yes, stay true. safe. <laughs> Absolutely. Bless you guys. Thanks for being part of what we're doing, and we'll be back again very, very soon. Bye for now. Bye.